morning continues in the Gospel of Matthew. This time we're in chapter 14, verses 22 through 33. The headline says, Jesus walks on the water. Immediately, Jesus made the disciples get into the boat and go on ahead of him to the other side while he dismissed the crowd. What crowd? They just, 5,000 or more of them were just fed by two loaves. Five loaves and two fish. Lynn's helping me out. After he had dismissed them, he went up on a mountainside by himself to pray. When evening came, he was there alone. But the boat was already a considerable distance from land, buffeted by the waves because the wind was against it. During the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went out to them walking on the water, the lake. When the disciples saw him walking on the water or the lake, they were terrified. It's a ghost, they said, and they cried out in fear. But Jesus immediately said to them, take courage, it is I. Don't be afraid. Lord, if it's you, Peter replied, tell me to come to you on the water. Come, Jesus said. Then Peter got down out of the boat, walked on the water, and came toward Jesus. But when he saw the wind, he was afraid, and beginning to sink, cried out, Lord, save me. Immediately, Jesus reached out his hand and caught him. You of little faith, why did you doubt? And when they climbed into the boat, the wind died down. Then those who were in the boat worshipped him, saying, Truly, you are the Son of God. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. You know, the sound is different in this large room from when I was practicing this without any lights on or fans or even uh, music. And the water of that lake was different than it A calm, sunny day. The water was moving about quite a bit. And so I call this water rescue. Because Peter's rescued. Water is an essential element in all of our lives. It's written about in the very first book of the Bible, the second verse, Genesis. God's spirit hovered over the waters of creation. Now the earth was formless and empty. Darkness was over the surface of the deep. And the spirit of God was hovering over the waters. In generations later, Noah and his family experienced a flood that eventually dried up. In Genesis chapter 8, We read, by the first day of the first month of Noah's 601st year, the water had dried up from the earth. Noah then removed the covering from the ark and saw that the surface of the ground was dry. Almost to the end of the next month, by the 27th day of the second month, the earth was completely dry. In Genesis chapter 9, God speaks to Noah and to his sons with him. I now establish my covenant with you and with your descendants after you and with every living creature that was with you 
the birds, the livestock, and all the wild animals, all those that came out of the ark with you, every living creature on earth. I establish my covenant with you. Never again will all life be destroyed by the waters of a flood. Never again will there be a flood to destroy the earth. And God said, this is the sign of the covenant I am making between me and you and every living creature with you. A covenant for all generations to come. I've set my rainbow in the clouds and it will be the sign of the covenant between me and the earth. Whenever I bring clouds over the earth and the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will remember my covenant between me and you and all the living creatures of every kind. Never again will the waters become a flood to destroy all life. Whenever the rainbow appears in the clouds, I will see it and remember the everlasting covenant between God and all living creatures of every kind on the earth. So God said to Noah, this is the sign of the covenant I have established between me and all life on the earth. Water, an essential element. The power of God over water is revealed. It ends up being a blessing, but for Jonah the prophet, it was not a good day. Jonah chapter 1 verse 4. Then the Lord sent a great wind on the sea and such a violent storm arose that the ship threatened to break up. The boat's crew was frantic trying to save themselves from that stormy waters. And finally Jonah admits he's the reason they're having the trouble they're in. And he has to tell the crew what to do. In Jonah chapter 1 verse 15, then they took Jonah and threw him overboard and the raging sea grew calm. Water and wind have great power and that's written about in our Psalms. In Psalm 93 verses 3 to 4, the seas have lifted up, Lord, the seas have lifted up their voice. The seas have lifted up their pounding waves. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. Anyone in a boat on the water should be prepared for stormy water. In Psalm 107, the psalmist writes about moments like that. Verses 23 to 29. Some went out on the sea in ships. They were merchants on the mighty waters. They saw the works of the Lord, his wonderful deeds in the deep. For he spoke and stirred up a tempest that lifted high the waves. They mounted up to the heavens and went down to the depths. In their peril... Their courage melted away. They reeled and staggered like drunkards. They were at their wits' end. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble. And he brought them out of their distress. He stilled the storm to a whisper. The waves of the sea were hushed. So Jesus had fed 5,000, but before that he had heard about the death of John the Baptist at a party for Herod's birthday. And I think that he, after feeding the 5,000, that was still on his heart and his mind and troubled his spirit. And so he sends away the disciples and then the crowd. And Jesus is praying alone on the mountain. I believe that the death of John the Baptist, the news of it, changed the ministry of Jesus. It's one of the milestones of his time on earth. 
I think at that moment, Jesus was more aware that time was short. And if time was short for Jesus, then his disciples needed to be ready. So I'm telling you, I think the storm that they experienced was a way to help them be ready. The Sea of Galilee became stormy while the disciples tried to cross it. The cause of the storm was winds coming down from the surrounding hills. The storm started unexpectedly. The storm generated great power. It placed the disciples in danger. And when it ended, it was like that. Now the wind had been against them, and the waves were high. I want, to, want you to imagine their boat, 27 feet long about, and about seven and a half feet wide, which is longer than my wingspan. I was trying to imagine what would it take to get enough cardboard cutouts to display that little boat, which would appear big in this opening in front of me. But if you were in it on stormy seas, it wouldn't seem quite big enough. 27 feet long, seven and a half feet wide, maybe it could hold as many as 15 people. The disciples were experiencing a wild ride. Isn't that the name of a, an amusement park ride, Mr. Toad's Wild Ride? Jesus was seen walking toward them on the water. You're a disciple. You're in a boat. You're trying to save you, yourself and your brothers in arms. And there's somebody out there during the storm walking toward you. What would you think? Here they are contending with the wind and the waves, the water splashing into the boat. They're attempting to bail out the water, I think. And they're trying to use the oars that they have to guide the boat and keep afloat. And then someone appeared near them walking on the water. They were frightened, thinking they saw a ghost. But Jesus immediately spoke to, the, to his disciples and his voice was heard by them, despite the sounds around them and the wind in their faces. It is I, do not be afraid. How many times have we needed to hear that in our storms, in our lives? The storm wasn't over yet, but they were somewhat relieved in hearing Jesus speak words to them. One disciple then makes a bold, risky move. He asked Jesus if he could come out and walk on the water too. The other disciples were exhausted, but somehow Peter was inspired and energized in the moment. Peter was about to put himself into danger, stepping out of a perfectly good boat into stormy waters. And Jesus said, come. Peter stepped out of the boat that had kept them all pretty much safe from a watery grave. And Peter leaves behind the other disciples and he walks on the water toward Jesus. Can you imagine that moment? You step over the gunnel, the edge of the boat, you step into the water, and you're standing like Jesus in front of you? Peter must have felt wonderful for that moment. And how could Peter be bold like that? I think it was the presence, the permission, and the person of Jesus Christ. But then, what did Peter do? He noticed the wind and the waves. His focus changed, and Peter started to sink and cried out, Lord, save me. Now, some of you have 
become aware of my sense of humor at times. So I wondered, how low did Peter sink before he panicked? And how long did Jesus wait until the water made Peter cry out? Did he wait until Peter was in the water up to his knees? Did he wait until Peter was into the water up to his waist, up to the middle of his chest, his shoulders, his neck? Lord, save me. Jesus grabbed Peter by the hand, and Jesus asked Peter, where's your faith? Why did you doubt? Now, not written yet was a verse that we can find in James chapter 1. But when you ask, you must believe and not doubt, because the one who doubts is like a wave of the sea, blown and tossed about by the wind. Peter says, now you tell me. The wind immediately stopped when Jesus and Peter got into the boat. And all the disciples in the boat were awestruck, and they worshipped Jesus. Truly, you are the Son of God. In Psalm 65, verses 5 to 8, you answer us with awesome and righteous deeds, God our Savior, the hope of all the ends of the earth and of the farthest seas, who formed the mountains by your power, having armed yourself with strength, who stilled the roaring of the seas, the roaring of their waves, and the turmoil of the nations. The whole earth is filled with awe at your wonders. Where morning dawns, where evening fades, you call forth songs of joy. Psalm 89, verse 9. You rule over the surging sea when its waves mount up. You still them. Now, the disciples were learning through this whole experience. They learned about deeper faith from their experience in the stormy wind and waves. Peter's bold request taught them about taking a risk. Peter's sinking taught them about focus. It's wise to learn from others' trouble before the same trouble threatens you. I thought about this episode in our Bibles. And what came to me was a song I heard in my growing up teenage years. One title of it is The Secret by Ralph S. Cushman and Tony Seda, Senna. Another title is I Met God in the Morning. I met God in the morning when the day was at its best and his presence rose like sunrise, like a glory in my breast. All day long his presence lingered, all day long he stayed with me. Then we sailed in perfect calmness over a very troubled sea. Other ships were torn and battered, other ships were sore distressed, but the wind that seemed to drive them brought to us a peace and rest, brought to us a peace and rest. Then I thought of other mornings with a keen remorse of mind, when I too might lose the moorings with his presence left behind. So I think I know the secret, learn from many a troubled way. You must seek him in the morning if you want him through the day, you must seek him in the morning if you want him through the day. Stormy waters, troubled seas, turbulent life. If we were to listen to each other, we could probably find out we've been through that 
doctor's diagnosis, an unexpected bill in the mail, someone turning away from us, perhaps someone betraying our trust. All these are different forms of trouble in our lives. I came across a prayer. Uh, an old preacher in Southern California named Ray Steadman has put some of his sermons on the internet, and you can find them yourself. But he had a prayer, and I'll read it for you now. Thank you, Father, for what you are doing with us. We thank you for this amazing Bible event, which reminds us and teaches us what our Lord Jesus is still doing in our lives today. Though we live in the midst of perilous times and travel along troubled seas, whether Jesus is in the boat or near the boat, we know that Jesus is the master of the storms of life. And Jesus is able to secure us and strengthen us and enlighten us and to teach us about himself. So we pray that our eyes may be opened and that we may respond in faith. In Jesus' name, amen.